So what's the connection between diet and sleep? So I do a intermittent fasting, sometimes only one meal a day, sometimes no meals a day. Is there a good science on the interaction between fasting and sleep? We have some data, I would prefer more, but we have data both on time-restricted eating, mm -hmm. um, and then we have some data on fasting to a degree. On time-restricted eating, I think that it has some benefits, although the human replication studies have actually not borne out quite the same health benefit extent that the animal studies have. There've been some disappointing um, studies, one here close to, uh, to where we are right now at UCSF recently. So I think time-restricted eating can be a good thing, and there are many benefits of time-restricted eating. Is sleep one of them? No, it doesn't seem to be, mm. because there are, probably at the time that we're recording this, three pretty decent studies that I'm aware of. Um, two out of the three were in obese individuals, one out of the three were in healthy weight individuals. And what they found is that time-restricted eating in all three of those studies didn't have any advantageous benefit to sleep. It didn't necessarily harm sleep, but it didn't seem to improve it. When it comes to fasting though, which is a different state, we don't have too many studies, experimental studies with long-term fasting. The best data that we have is probably from re religious practices. And probably the most data we have is during Ramadan where people will fast for 29 to 30 days from sunrise to sunset. Mm -hmm. um, and under those conditions, there are probably, there are probably five distinct changes that we've seen none of them seem to be particularly good for sleep. The first is that the amount of melatonin that you release, and melatonin is a hormone. It's often called the hormone of darkness um, or the vampire hormone, not because it makes you look longingly at people's <laughs> necklines, but it's just because it comes out at night. Yeah, Melatonin signals to your brain that and your body that it's dark, it's nighttime, and it's time to sleep. Those individuals, when they were undergoing that regimen of fasting, they the amount of melatonin that was released and when it was released, the amount of melatonin decreased and the, when it was released came later. That was the first thing. The second thing was that they ended up finding it harder to fall asleep as quickly as they normally would otherwise. The third thing was that the total amount of sleep that they were getting decreased. The fourth fascinating thing was that a wake promoting chemical called orexin increased and this is why a lot of people will say, Look, when I'm fasting, it feels like I can stay awake for longer mm. and I can, I'm more alert, I'm more active. And I'll come back to, from an evolutionary perspective, why we understand that to be mm. the case. And then the fourth factor is that fasting didn't decrease the amount of deep sleep that seemed to be unaffected. It did, however, decrease the amount of REM sleep or dream sleep. Mm. And we know that REM sleep dreaming is essential for emotional first aid, mental health, it's critical for memory, creativity. It's also critical for several hormone functions. It's when, you know, if you, there's direct correlations between testosterone, you know, testosterone release peaks just before you go into REM sleep and during REM sleep too. So REM sleep is critical. But so those are the five changes that we've seen. None of them seem to be that advantageous for sleep. But the fourth point that I mentioned, which was orexin, which is this wake promoting chemical. And a good demonstration or a very sad demonstration of its power is when it becomes very deficient in the brain and it leads to a condition called narcolepsy, mm. where you know, you, you're you just unpredictable with your sleep and you, um, so, um, so orexin when it's in high concentrations keeps you awake. When you lose it, it can, you know, it can put you very much into a state of narcolepsy where you're sleeping a lot of the time in unpredictable sleep. Why on earth when you are fasting would the brain release a wake promoting chemical? And our answer is right now is the following. The One of the few times that I mentioned before that we see animals undergoing insufficient sleep or prolonged sleep deprivation is under conditions of starvation. Mm -hmm. And that is an extreme evolutionary pressure. And at that point, 
the brain will forego some, it won't forego all, but it will forego some of its sleep. And the reason is so that it can stay awake for longer because the sign of starvation is saying to the brain, you can't find food in your normal foraging perimeter. Mm -hmm. You need to stay awake for longer so you can travel outside of your perimeter for a far, further distance and maybe you will find food and save the organism. So in other words, when we fast, it's giving our brain this evolutionary signal that you are under conditions of starvation. So the brain responds by saying, oh my goodness, I need to release the chemical that helps the organism stay awake for longer, which is orexin, so that they can forage for more food. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, your brain from an evolutionary perspective doesn't know about this thing called Safeway that, <laughs> that you could easily go to and break the fast. Mm -hmm. But that's how we understand fasting. And I think, you know, my dear friend, Peter Atiyah has, um, has done a lot of work in this area too. I think fasting and David Sinclair's brilliant work, goodness me, what a, an individual too. The work is pretty clear there that, you know, time-restricted eating and fasting have wonderful health benefits. Time, you know, fasting is, creates this thing called hermesis, mm -hmm. just like exercise and low level stress and sauna, heat, shock. Um, and hormesis is a biological process, I think as David Sinclair has once said, in simple layman's terms is, what, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the there is certainly good data that fasting and time-restricted eating has many benefits. Is sleep one of them? It doesn't seem to be, it doesn't seem to enhance sleep. But it's interesting to, to understand its effects on sleep. I've uh, like I, I fasted. <laughs> it's a study of N of two. I've once <laughs> fasted seventy two hours, and another time forty eight hours, and uh, I found that I got much less sleep and it was very restful. Though I hesitate to say this, but this is how I felt, which is I needed less sleep. I wonder if my brain is deceiving me because it feels like I'm getting a whole extra amount of focus for free. And I wonder if there's long-term impacts of that. Because if I fast 24 hours, get the same amount of calories, one meal a day, there's a little bit of discomfort, like just uh, maybe your body gets a little bit colder. Maybe there's mm -hmm. just, I mean, you, hunger, uh, but the amount of focus is crazy. Yeah, And so I wonder, it's like, I'm a little suspicious of that. I feel like I'm getting something for free. It's, I'm the same way with sweetener, like uh, Splendor or something. It's like, it's gotta be really bad for you, right? Because <laughs> why is it so tasty, right? And, and I, I think, yeah, I, as we said, you know, for <laughs> with biology, you don't get if there's, free if there's lunch. a gain, there's, yeah, there's often a cost too. So, <laughs> but we are, at least understand the biological basis of what you're describing. It's not that, you you actually don't need less sleep. It's that this chemical is present that forces you more awake. And so subjectively you feel as though I don't need as much sleep because I'm wide awake. Mm. And those two things are quite different. It's not as though you your sleep need has decreased. It's that your brain has hit the overdrive switch, the overboost switch to say, we need to keep you awake because food is in short supply. Mm 